Hello, welcome to our next step-by-step -step tutorial of Quick Surface. In this tutorial, we will start with a scan data like this one, and using Quick Surface, we will do reverse engineering and we will generate a solid of the impeller like the one on the screen. So let's begin. All you need in, for this tutorial is to have Quick Surface installed. You don't need to download any scan data because it comes with the help files distributed with the installer. What you need to do is just select help, example files, and then select the impeller. This will load the scan data into Quick Surface. The first thing I would like to say is that this is already aligned. In order to check this, you can go to the navigation cube and select coordinate system. You can place it in the top view and you can see that the z-axis is exactly where the center of the rotation is. So there is no need for any alignment for this particular example. Let's put this into isometric view so you can understand better. The first step that we need to do is to create the main body of the impeller. And I'm going to use the 2D sketch for this. The 2D sketch has two different options and I'm going to select the revolved surface. The reason for doing this is because it will allow me to think in the rotational way. I'm just clicking on the option which is called Outline Mesh. You can see that the software automatically captures the outline of the mesh and projects everything into my sketch here. I will press Create. For the ease of use, I will just go to the coordinate system display on the top right corner and turn off the coordinate system. What I would like to do now is to create the main body. I'm going to use Extract Primitives, the first icon, and we'll make sure that the auto fillet is turned off. The brush size is of your choice. You can just use the slider to get the size depending on your computer resolution in a more comfortable way. I cannot advise of any number, it's just the way you feel it's the best for you. Make sure that you selected the fit line. What I'm going to do is just brush over holding the left mouse button to extract this line. And in a similar way, we'll continue extracting the other lines, the top one and this side one. I am focused on the main profile here, so I'm going to extract this line also here. We'll carry on to extract this line and this line. Why I don't extract this here? Because it's a connection between these two lines that I probably need to do in a more specific ways. This is also kind of a spline that I want to interpolate. So I'm going back and we'll actually draw the spline that defines the bottom shape. The way I do this is just by selecting the add freeform curve. You can just pick the starting point. As always, try not to use too many points. I'm just using a few of them. You can adjust and make some modifications to get the best of the shape, but this is what I get so far. I will select a line now and we'll create a single line here. I'm trying to keep it horizontal. You see, you have a highlight here, a dashed white line that guarantees that my line is absolutely horizontal. You can use the selection tool to set all these lines to vertical and also to horizontal if you want to get the most accurate results. In order to close the profile, what I'm going to do is using the corner trim. We'll make sure that the corner trim is selected and we'll start just painting over the end corners so they can intersect. I'm going to do the same here and also here. I would like to get this rounded with the fillet, so I'm going to use the auto fillet command. 
the autofilled command will use the underlying scan data to determine the fillet. So what you need to do is just in the same way you just brush over, hold the left mouse button and brush over the corner and you see that it automatically fit the fillet from the underlying scan data. I will do the same on this corner. There is an option here, automatically add dimensions. You can play with this if you want to for exercise. Let's do the same on the top and here. I need to connect the two. I'll just press OK. What I'm going to do is start dragging this corner. And you can see a guideline here, which is a black, which guarantees that it, the line is in the same location. And the white points that you see are actually where it intersects with the other uh, curves. For example, this one is actually here, and this one is at the bottom. And this is what I'm interested in. Again, I just drag this so they can snap. In a way, I'm nearly there to close my profile. I'm going to use now what is called the tangent arc. We'll pick this one and this one and we'll start moving my mouse until I get in a good and comfortable result. The software automatically suggests a radius here. I'll just uh, click press escape key so I don't need to add any dimension. Now you can see this is a bit more complex. You can probably create it with a spline but for the demonstration I'll just leave it as a tangent arc. One other thing that you might do is to create a tangency here if you want to. You can just select Modify. Click on the point which is the common point between the line and the spline and then select Make Tangent. This will ensure that the um, spline is perfectly uh, continuous with the line. I'm ready with the main body. I will press OK. The next step that I need to do is just select this sketch and select Revolved. In this situation I just press OK. As you can see we created our main solid body. I don't need for now the sketch to be seen and also I will just hide the Revolved surface. We'll bring back the scan data and we'll repeat the same step as we started. Go to 2D sketch. Select for Revolve Surface and press Outline Mesh. Now we are ready, we'll create another new sketch. What we try to do here is to create an outline of our um, impeller. What I will do is using the same tools, we'll go to Create, make sure that I selected the fit line and we'll extract the lines from my scan data. This is the same approach that we did before for these uh, four segments. Going back, we'll go to Modify and Corner Trim to intersect. This automatically created a fillet. I will press Undo because what I need to do is just to make sure that I have only a corner trim. Press here. Let's close this. I will use the auto fillet and brush over the corners of these two lines. You can see that it's automatically fit this for me. We'll press OK because what I need to do is just to create um, a solid body here. I will just pick my endpoint and drag it, make sure that it actually snaps to this black line and we'll put it inside as you can see on the screen. I will just repeat the same here. Because we are trying to use the solid modeling, we need to close this profile for the best results. I am going to use the freeform curve. Now it is your freedom to create this freeform curve. The only thing that you need to do is, you don't need to be precise, you just want to make sure that this shape actually is inside the main body. So I created this and I can press OK. I will leave this sketch for now on the side and we will go back to my 
scan data. In order to get this plate, I need to fit a surface here. I'm going to use the fit surface command, which is available in the main toolbar. I just click on the fit surface. We will be using the magic wand. Make sure that the value here is 1.5 degrees. Click somewhere here and observe the result. So it needs to look something like on my screen. What the software does, it's selected um, using the curvature, a lot of triangles here that will define my shape. And I will just press fit surface. I'm not going to change anything. It will be five by five for now. And we'll create this surface. What I need to do is to extract the same from the back side of the plate. Select the fit surface. Make sure it's 1.5 degrees and click somewhere here. Even if that not everything is selected, we have enough data for the fit surface. Press fit surface. Make sure that you don't play with the expand by 40 degrees in order to complete the exercise. And you just press create. What I want to do is now to create this plate. The way I can create it is using this sketch, if you remember, I created before. And from this sketch, I'm going to create a revolved surface. How can I do this? There are two ways. I can right click on the sketch and select revolve. Or I can just click on the screen and select the icon for the revolve. This will create a solid revolved body here. The next step that I need to do is to select everything and select the trim command. The trim command will allow me to create a solid body of all of the intersection of all the surfaces that I selected. In particular, I mean the revolved surface, the fit surface and the other fit surface. We can just remove the shapes by clicking on them. For example, here I got rid of all these. Let me hide the mesh so you, you don't get confused. What I'm trying to do is just get a solid body of this. So I don't need this shape and I also don't need this. And I'm getting close. This will be my blade, but I have some floating surfaces. I need to click here so I can remove them. What helps me in this case is this indicator on the top that says multiple surfaces. My goal in this case is just to end up with this solid body. So I keep clicking removing this and then I will remove this one. Also I get this shape here. What you can see now is that we got what we need and I can see the indicator here saying it's a solid body. I'm happy with this and I just press OK. I will just hide the sketch because I don't need it for now. So we managed to recreate the blade. We created the blade as a solid body. And this is the main body of the impeller. A few steps that we need to complete our project is to create multiple instances of, my, of our blade. How we can do this, we can just select this main body, which is a solid. Then we can go to pattern and select a circular pattern. What we need to do now is choose how many instances we need. In my demonstrations, I can just pick eight or you can pick 10 and you can play. Let's apply 10 and then press OK. So now we have the multiple instances of our blades and the main board. Now the project is not completed because technically we have two solids. One is the main body and uh, the other one is the circular pattern. And what we need to do, if you can see there are no edges here, which means that they are independent bodies. So if you export this for use, this is not actually a complete model. So what I'm going to do is just select everything just by dragging a mouse. And you have a prompt here 
which is called Combine Selected Solids, or you can just go to this arrow, click on it, and select Combine Selected Bodies. If you notice now, we have a nice edges here defined, which uh, identifies for us that everything is completed and we only have one single solid. So this is how you can create your more intermediate level of reverse engineering and generate a complex shape like the one on the screen. I hope this video was useful. Thank you for watching.